Um, we're looking, I would say, in the long run at an increase from a price below a dollar a kilolitre when we could rely on uh, gravity fed, rain, rain supplied uh, dams that had already been built a long time ago to maybe $2 a kilolitre uh, when the marginal source of supply is, is desal or, or recycling. That will have some, some effect on demand. Um, uh, more in effect if it turns out that, that there is a limit to that climate independent source, if it turns out that we can't just build another diesel plant every time we want more water. Uh, so we will see an effect, it will take a long time to work, and that's why I, I guess I favour moving steadily towards cost reflective pricing for water in the long run, but relying on, um, relying on restrictions as, as a short term drought management measure. Uh, and that's again though why I say we should scrap all the restrictions as soon as we have full supply in order that we have the full suite of restrictions to bring into play once, the, um, uh, once we do run into trouble. Uh, Paul, sorry, Paul first and then Pat. Uh, David, uh, as John said, the, the sensitivity of demand to price in an urban setting is, 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 is lower than certainly in a rural or productive setting, particularly for households. But there is, there is some... The long-run effect of pricing is certainly sharper than the short run effect that is but the, the change in demand in South East Queensland was not a price driven change uh, pricing had been in place for quite some time albeit with block tariffs but but it was a response to regulation and it was largely remember we went from about 320 litres per person per day to 128 litres per person per day we're currently back to about 165 160 165 now where did that occur? Most of that occurred outside the house. That is, it was in, in usage of water in gardens and, and in, in fairly profligate washing and various other activities, most of it. The crisis, within, with, during the crisis, without a doubt, people curtailed uh, showers, etc. The evidence, and there's some very nice work being done by uh, a civil engineer at Griffith University on the Gold Coast, where they're actually monitoring a large number of households in South East Queensland, and they can tell what water usage is occurring at any point in time. And it's showing that the, the four-minute shower is gone. So people, are, so people are taking, by and large, not, not worrying about that. But what they have done is they've moved to buy front-loading washing machines. In other words, they, they have modified their behaviour to the extent that they're now making their next purchase in something which is more water efficient. So some of those gains are locked in in a pretty good way. The complicating factor in South East Queensland over the last 18 months is it's been so wet, no one's wanted to, to water their garden. So, so it's, it's, the real test will be when the dry, when it dries again, which it will. I mean, it, it, it will actually occur, there will be a day when it doesn't rain, uh, believe me. Uh, and, and, and then I think we will, we, I don't think we'll go back to 320 or anything like it, and in fact QWC are targeting 200 odd, but and it will be some time even before we get there. But I think regulation did work. People responded to the crisis in, in, in quite an amazing way. And I, I agree with John. I, I think the problem is if you keep that, what I call the pulpit, going for too long, you don't have that available when there is actually another crisis and, and you lose credibility. Pricing will play some role, I think, in modifying consumer behaviour going forward, I agree. A, a quick point, um, if you use enough water, you will notice that we are on step tariffs already um, in uh, this part of the world. Um, I'm price sensitive to that. Why? Because my daughter gets hold of the bill uh, and makes me feel guilty with regard to it. So um, there, there is a, a price driver there to some extent already, um, and it, it works on me. I don't know if it works on the uh, rest of the community, but um, there. Andrew. Just to, David, just to add to that about, uh, I, I don't think purely price works in, in relation to this. What we saw was we saw crisis, and I think we saw a lot of behavioural response to crisis, not only regulation, but a, a plea to um, take part. So I think you'll see that there was a lot of community monitoring, um, a lot of people monitoring each other's behaviour. It created an enormous pressure to conform um, to that type of behaviour. Over time, studies have shown that that, that type of behaviour slips, as you will expect it to slip, um, which I think builds in some slack uh, into the system for, for future issues. So, uh, down here, and then we'll go over there. Uh, 
Uh, Catherine? Catherine. Hi, uh, my name is Ferry. Um, just want to expand a bit on diverse, diversifying supply of water. Um, I understand that coal seam gas is one of the growing industries in Southeast Queensland. Now, there has been, I think, um, options or studies on exploring the options of using water from coal seam gas and then um, releasing some dependencies on surface water for supply and where we are at for, on that stage. Coal seam gas, Paul. Uh, one of the issues with coal seam gas is the amount of water that is generated, which, which then has to be, uh, well, it has to be treated depending on what you're going to do with it. But the first thing you have to realise is that in some cases that water is going to have to be put back into the aquifers to keep the pressure up or else, or else there will be a drawdown. And, and, and this is an area which I don't think is well, yet well understood. Um, the drawdown will be such and the drop in pressure will be such that that water will not be available for alternative uses in those communities. So whether or not you want to take it away from that region, I think is the first thing, whether that's desirable. The second point I'd make is, is, is the heaviness of water. I mean, we have a network now in South East Queensland and without a doubt that network has given us much greater surety. The fact that we can pump water to the Gold Coast or the Gold Coast can pump water to Brisbane provides additional supply security. But how big and optimal, I mean, once the network gets a bit larger than that, you are using a huge amount of energy to pump water a long, a long way. And, 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 and really, there are, there are many better ways, better sources of, of, of water than, than pumping water huge, huge distances, unless you're in a very extreme region. So, so I don't see the water being coming to the, in the short term at least, coming to the urban areas of, of Australia to the coast, whether they're used in the region around where it's generated, I think is still a, a moot. It's still moot. John. I just want to throw in my favourite number on water, which is a tonne a kilolitre a dollar. A kilolitre of water weighs a tonne, delivered to your house for a dollar. Uh, there aren't many things that are like that. And if you think of then saying, why don't we take it from this wet place 500 or 1,000 kilometres away, and you sort of ask, you know, would somebody deliver a tonne of sand to your house for a dollar? Um, the answer is, is, is no. And I think if you, if, you keep that, if you keep that number in mind, uh, you can dismiss immediately from consideration a vast number of the schemes that make it in the newspaper. John, can you, can you just repeat that again? It's a tonne? A tonne? A kilolitre. A kilolitre weighs a tonne. Uh, Marvel's the metric system. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, so, you, you know, if you keep that fact in mind, and somebody suggests, why don't we take water over the Great Divide in either direction, uh, that's why. So that's a takeaway for my uh, Year 12 uh, son's um, assignment this week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, in the middle here. David Williams, University of Queensland. A question probably of Pat. You were talking about Wyvernhoe. There's no way that Wyvernhoe would contribute significantly in terms of taking a lot of water out of the system in the event of a flood. What scope is there within South East Queensland for off-stream diversion to storage? Obviously, it would flood areas. It's used a lot in Europe, for example, to divert water away from cities. 